We are Bellwitch, and you're watching Evil Greed's Distro Picks. I think the first one I picked was uh, Nismore Yud. I didn't see that. Um, I think the first thing that really caught my eye about this particular record was the cover. I think the cover is like really cool and daunting. Um, I'm still not quite sure what I think about it and what it means to me, but I know that it's super badass. And I love the depth, depth of it, the fact that it's black and white. I think that that's pretty unique um, when it comes to really cool album covers. Uh, and then aside from that, the record is like 100% amazing all the way through. Um, I feel like these days it's pretty rare that there's records that just play through and are really good nonstop. I think that's one of the biggest uh, qualities in it, it's specifically when it's in, on vinyl. Um, I think that's really important because it sucks to skip through songs. You know that the, as the years go on, you can still listen to Megadeth's Rest in Peace. Well, you can, uh, in fact. Um, Point being that, you know, <laughs> records still go from start to finish. It, it's true, it's true. Um, <laughs> Ms. Moore's from Eugene, right? Is that like the, the, yeah. the Parker Brothers is one of the Steven or Kenneth in that band? Totally. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard great things about them, but I've yet to see them, unfortunately. Yeah, I think one of my biggest regrets uh, was that we missed them playing this uh, album in its entirety at Roadburn last year. Missed too many bands. Yeah, we missed a lot of bands. one of your biggest regrets. Busy working week. It's one of my biggest regrets. That's a big statement. Of that day. Oh. During the day. You shrunk that. Yeah. Okay. Dude. But anyway, really good record. Thanks, Peanut Gallery. Good talking to you. Top here, I have the body. I believe this was the record they were touring with when I booked them. So I'm a I'm a booking agent at a bar in Seattle, and I booked Alcest along with the body. And um, th it, that was a uh, interesting mix because I think that the folks that were coming to see the body knew what they were in for, and the folks that were coming to see Alcest, some of them didn't have any idea what the body was gonna be like. That's yeah, a hell of a contrast. <laughs> it was great. I remember standing in the back of the room while the body was playing and thinking, this is like, over the years, they've gotten so crazy. Like, it's gone in such a wild direction. It's, it's challenging to listen to something that's scary, um, kind of unnerving. And uh, I remember thinking that and watching them, and <laughs> There were people kind of all around me in the back that were just like, ah, not liking it at all. And, and even saw some leave. And I thought, this is great. The body is clearing the squares out of here. Like, no problem. That made me like them all the much more. And I believe this is the record that they were touring on with that. So, props to the body. It's an interesting album title, too. I have fought against it, but I can't any longer. What do you think they're referring to? I have no idea. I was just wondering that. I think they're referring to their curiosity of what lies beyond this gate. I wonder what's behind the gate, too. What do you suppose it is? Uh, a 
farm of fallow rotting fields. <laughs> fallow. I wonder if they're thinking they're talking about paying taxes. <clears throat> the IRS doesn't watch this. You yeah. Narc. So uh, these are two different releases from Whoa. Whoa! Whoa! Yes, Whoa. The Whoa is the name of the band, W-O-E. Excellent uh, band from uh, originally from Philly. Um, I think now residing in Brooklyn. Um, I played with them as Jeshik my... Jeshik lives in Philly. What was that? Jeshik still lives in Philly. Oh, gotcha. Well, I think Chris Grigg uh, um, has moved to Brooklyn as far as I know. And um, they share a drummer with Kralis, Lev Weinstein, and he's definitely in New York City. So yeah, I played with them uh, as Ariel ruined my solo project. It was the first time I ever played the High Line, uh, Dylan's venue, and that was in 2010. And then I played with them again uh, at Shadow Woods Metal Festival in 2017. Ashbor played that show as well. Yes, it was I'm a, wearing an Ashbor shirt it, it underneath was a, this. It was a this hell is, of a bill. This is coming full circle. Yeah. So um, they were really good in 2010, or was maybe it was 2011, and they were even better in 2017. Um, Excellent East Coast black metal. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> uh, I picked this CD, uh, which is the Cloud Rat discography. Um, Longtime friends of mine. Um, killer band. They've always like they've always toured constantly. Every release is good, and they've really, really built on when they started. Um, I think I toured with them in an old band I was in in 2010, which is the beginning of this discography. And uh, it's been really crazy watching them progress and go from playing smaller shows to really big shows. I think they toured with uh, Wolves in the Throne Room last year, which is kind of a crazy mix. Um, but yeah, super cool people, uh, politically on point. They're just like, they're great. From Detroit, killer, kind of crusty grindcore, Cloud Rat discography. Uh, me again? I'm, I'm just... Wait your turn. Yeah, yeah it's your turn. <laughs> the Great Cessation by Yob. I, remember, I believe this came out, oh, here it says right down here, 2009. This was, I believe, the first record Yob did after Midian broke up, which was probably 2008, 2007, something like that. And, um... Yeah, Jesse and I had old bands that played quite a few shows with Midian in the Midwest, and uh, it, was, it was too bad what happened to it. But it was a there was another band called Midian from somewhere in Wisconsin, the world. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that um, I don't even believe was very active, but they got upset about the name. Oh, and, I remember uh, hearing about that. Yeah, and they got a lawyer and got super serious and uppity and said you can't use our name so Midian broke up and shortly thereafter or I don't know, I'm, at, I'm out of time after this record came out and I think that's a great record I'm at the time when it first came out I thought this was my, my new favorite Yob record and it's still up there uh, speaking of Yob um, this is two albums later than that one uh, clearing the path to ascend is their second to most recent album and it's got, uh, I think, my favorite song, Marrow. Probably, you know, Killer. <laughs> it's so many people's favorite song. It's so beautiful. 20-minute epic. Um, starts out very mellow and gets sort of heavier and heavier, but maintains that sort of just beautiful melody throughout the whole thing. And I saw Mike uh, at one of his solo shows. He did an acoustic uh, rendering of it, which was really awesome. And I think he later recorded that for Revolver magazine mm -hmm. or something. And then, yeah, the sort of... Uh, uh, Nothing to Win is the sort of possibly the most upbeat Yob song that I've heard where it's kind of like almost sort of motorheady and has like these 
sort of really active toms going on and you know kind of definitely uh, blurs the lines of what would be considered doom metal. Although I, I've never really thought of Yob as a doom metal band. I think they're just too strange and sort of unique to be called doom metal in a sense. I think they'd even say that. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, my favorite Yob album amongst a discography of amazing records. Clearing the path to a sound. I picked High on Fire, Blessed Black Wings. Um, I was originally looking for Art of Self-Defense, but y'all don't have it. Uh, so this is a really good second choice. Um, I think one of the main reasons I picked this is just because the news, I think, hit today that they, uh, High on Fire, just got nominated for a Grammy. And I think the fact that we live in a time that um, a band like them is being sort of accepted as they are without ever sort of, they never really altered their sound, they never changed anything they're doing, they're just kind of kick-ass rock and metal. Um, really good riffs on that record. Yeah, there's heavy, heavy riffs on this record. Um, and I think, I'm just super excited that they're up there, who knows who they're gonna be running against, it's gonna be a bunch of horse shit. And Joe but, uh, Preston's uh, plays based on that record. Shots fired. Shots fired. Yeah, this is just a great record. I remember thinking it was, uh, I was sort of quite surprised at how sort of satanic the artwork is on that. Very cool artwork. Yeah. I remember seeing the uh, music video for Devolution and thinking it was badass. I don't remember the video for that. Yeah. I think I saw it on. Uh, I think it was on, on TV, when there were still music videos on TV. Good what shit. TV? I don't know. I don't know. I just look at my phone now. <laughs> An ancient artifact of some kind. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mr. Desmond. Thank you, Mr. Schreibman. I picked this Amon Ra record. To be honest, I have not listened to this record, but I know all the songs on it because it's a live record. Um, I was lucky enough, it's probably 2006 or 2007, I filled in with a band that did a US and a follow-in European tour with Amon Ra, and I was not familiar with them before those tours, but uh, getting to see them every night for two months straight was awesome. And with that new record that came out, it's been really cool to listen to um, them evolve on their sound, on their approach to things. All, um, <clears throat> it's all still very Amon Ra, but um, I think they've, they've just gotten more honest over the years and more, um, they've gone in much more in depth and uh, they're great. <laughs> So I picked the uh, most recent Chelsea Wolf album, Is Spun. I just saw her play at the Crystal Ballroom in Portland, and it was an awesome show. Uh, this record has these sort of <coughs> noisier, kind of almost metal tones in it that's perhaps uh, somewhat contrasting to some of her earlier material. Um, it's very haunting and very beautiful. Uh, I saw her also, I think the other time I saw her live was in 2012 or 2013 at the Doug Fur. And, um, yeah, it was interesting seeing the uh, um, contrast of the two different shows. Doug Fur is a smaller venue, right? Yeah, Doug Fur is like two hundred people, maybe. Sort of two to three hundred people, and it's got the it's like that basement venue with the weird sort of like lit up sort of almost disco-y looking panels and is stuff. Is that inside of a hotel? It's yeah, it's part of a hotel complex, and there's like a bar and a hotel, and uh, yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, Chelsea Wolf, ta-da. I guess 
this is my, my last record I picked up. It's the Full of Hell Mersbo collaboration. Um, I've always thought Mersbo is super cool. And uh, this was the first Full of Hell record I ever got. Um, and I think that it's just a really, really prime example of a collaborative record. Um, it's kind of seamless and hard to tell when Mersbo is happening and not happening. Um, we also had a kind of funny thing over a few tours where we've sort of been following Full of Hell around or they've been following us around. And I've become pretty pretty okay friends with uh, Dylan the singer and uh, they are all just stand up nice guys. And I think it's really cool that they've been able to do as much as they've been doing. Super active band. Uh, they've done a ton of collaborative albums with the body that are like completely out there as well. And they seem to always be pushing uh, their own limits. Not to mention the fact that they are pretty young guys. I think the drummer turned 24 this year. And they've been touring since they were like 16, which I just think is commendable. And we can almost be their awesome. fathers. Eric could definitely be their father. Yes, I could. I'm old. <laughs> I never noticed the artwork on that. I don't know if I've ever actually seen that record in person. The artwork's great. It's cool. And the back cover's really cool as well. Cool back, gentlemen. Is, it, is that what you call like the sort of matte finish? Like with the Ethan matte? Yeah, well, like matte, like his, I don't know. I was just thinking about mate and mats and you know. Yeah, not, I just got kind of word associate -y. Like Matt Pike. With it. <laughs> Did you just say associate <laughs> Associate-ish. Is that like what happens after you associate? You associate AD? Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Sun, Black One. Um, I remember when this came out, um, I got it immediately and I had never heard it. I didn't really know what to expect, but I heard a lot of talk about it. And I will admit, I did not enjoy it. I thought, this is really strange. I don't get it. And as time has gone on, maybe like the past two years, I've gone back to it. And um, I think they're, all the records are really good. Um, I picked this one in particular. There were others because um, I remember buying it and not enjoying it. But um, I've, I've really grown to like it a lot. I think it's a really uh, interesting approach. It's very different than, their, than a lot of the other projects. I guess it's similar to some of the other projects that the members have as well. Um, have you seen them? I have never seen them, no. I, I hear that it's uh, loud. It's really loud. Given uh, Man of War, Red Feather Money. Yeah, I saw them with Earth and Dead in the Dirt a really long time ago, and it vibrated the earplugs out of my ears. Wow. I have a foggy recollection of it as well. <laughs> yeah, I saw them, God, 15 years ago maybe, in San Francisco. Yeah, and they were kind of slowly moving around the stage with hoods on, and I wasn't quite sure where the sound was coming from. I think the noise comes from the amps, right? Is that where it generally comes from? <laughs> well, I, 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 I didn't get a, um, any definitive answer on that. I think it was up in the air. Mm. His memory is foggy as well. Yeah, it's, it's pretty foggy in general. Most things about me are foggy. This shows. Yeah, yeah, it's very mysterious. Primitive Man. We did a tour with Primitive Man in the U.S. last November, or a year ago this past November, and um, I believe that was for this record mm -hmm. that they just put out. Yep. Not only are they great live, but it's, um, it's a very good record. They were a joy to be on tour with, and they kick ass, very heavy, very, um, I think the kids would say no fucks given. 
Okay. Great band name too. They don't give two fucks. They don't give two fucks. No. Which is kind of implied with no fucks given if we're being honest here. If not one fuck is given, then why would two fucks be given? I don't give a fuck, man. <laughs> we might be going on tour with them soon. Oh yeah, that's right. Right. Have we confirmed with that yet? I don't know. I told them we were 99% and I haven't been back yet. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Primitive Man, if you see this, we'd like to confirm or I'm 100% for that tour. How do you say associated in German? Yeah. Good question. Well, I would like to take this moment to point out... Lots there, of good records here, though. I could go find another one. Well, there are many good records. There are no Megadeth records. I wanted <laughs> Stained Class by Judas Priest. Sorry, I'll stop interrupting you. No more Mate for you. Uh, so... I'm more I, of a Sad Wings of Destiny kind of guy. That's my second favorite Judas Priest record. Stained yeah. Class is my first What favorite. do you like more about Stained Class? Rock and Roll. Uh, I think, well, uh, Stained Class is like their darkest, most adventurous album, and it's right before, it kind of takes what they started on Sad Wings and uh, Sin After Sin, and it crystallines it in a in their darkest, most sort of adventurous record before they sort of turn into this, yeah, <laughs> before they get all, you know, into their commercial phase of uh, uh, Hellbent for Leather and He's British Steel. Smith today. Mm -hmm. You just take syllables and you crush them together, you can make your own words. <laughs> 